the toolkit WM150 watt meter. We're going to take a look at this and figure out a way to make this work for guys like us. Take a look. This is what you get with a watt meter. You get the little USB, you get the manual, and the meter. I've already put the XT90s on it because, you know, let's see what it can do. With it powered up on a 2S, you can see it has a pretty nice little display. Now this is a real-time display, so when I put a load on this, you'll actually be able to see a little graph running across and you'll able to see the numbers of just how many amps or watts the motor's pulling. For the first set of tests, I'm just simply going to power these motors up straight and show you the amps and watts that these things pull. First up is the Trailmaster Sport 55021 turn. There we go. Let's see. Let's see if we can see this a little bit better. It's kind of hard to see. But I'll just tell you. 1.43 amps, 11 watts. Holmes Hobbies Trail Master Sport 540 27 turn. We are looking at 1.45 amps, 11 watts. Traxxas Titan 12 turn 550. Ooh. We're looking at 2.6 amps, 20 watts. Chrome Master Sport 550, 15 turn. We're looking at 1.55 amps, 12 watts. The Red Cat 550 motor that we always see in the Red Cat brush motors, uh, I believe some people say it's a 17 turn. Holy! Wow. Okay. I'm assuming we got some bushings messed up. Let's see what it pulls. Oh, that thing's horrible. I can smell it. 6 amps, 5 amps, 6 amps. 41 watts. <laughs> that poor motor. Oh, there we go. 2.25 amps, 17 watts. When that bushing you start to raise heck like that, yeah. <laughs> that really added some watts. It was like 42 to 50. That was interesting. Now we have the Traxxas 21 turn. Now this is the reverse rotation because it came out of a TRX-4. Sounds good. About 1.5 amps, 11 watts. So basically all the good running motors is about the same. Okay, this is gonna be interesting right here. I've got a Hobbywing XR8 ESC 2S battery. Got an ASUS 6 uh, 4600 kV motor. I'm going to show you that. I've got a 10 shock 2400 kV motor. I've got a Holmes Hobbies B uh, Polar Pro BL uh, 3500 kV. I'm going to show you that one. I've got a Holmes Hobbies Revolver 1800 kV. Now, this is an older motor here. I would put this in videos, but it's so loud. And then I have a Castle 3800 kV slate. So let's see what these motors have got. All right, let's go ahead and turn up the speed here. All the way, let's zoom in, see if we can see this. 2.56 amps and 19 watts. It's real hard to see on that, I know. 10 shock 2400 kV. Quite a bit slower. I'm about uh let me zoom in here. It's fluctuating between one to one point three amps, looking like one point two four right now at nine watts. Here's the Castle thirty eight hundred slate. Well, 
Sounds good. 1.5 amps and 11 watts. Here we have the Homeless Polar Pro 3500 kV. May need to do some bearing work on this guy. It has got 1.8 amps, 13 watts. Wish we could see that a little better. Yep, I need to mess with the bearings on this one. This one has been running quite a few trucks and not at a nice gentle 2S either. And now it's time for the loud one, the revolver. I hope I can hold this thing. Let's see where we are. We are 2.39 amps and 18 watts. Okay, so this is getting a little bit interesting. I've got a Crawlmaster Sport 550 12 turn right here. We're going to go ahead and spin it up. I've got an old 3S. It's got 11.4 volts coming out of it. Let's turn this thing up and get a baseline of where the motor is just free revving. And then we're going to check it against first and second gear in the TRX-4. We are looking at 1.3 amps, 14 watts. Let's see if I can zoom in and get you. Ah, uh, kind of hard to get. It's at 1.25 and or 1.25 amps and 14 watts now. Okay, the motor's back in place. It has the 11 tooth pinion gear. The stock tracks this pinion gear, and it's in the C hole which the holes have always seemed to work fine for me. Let's go ahead and turn this thing up. We are looking at about 1.6 amps and 17 to 18 watts. This is for gear. And now it's in second gear. Let's see what we've got. We're at 2.53 amps and 28 watts. Let's see that a little bit. 2.44 amps now, 27 watts. So guys, this is way more interesting than I thought it would be. It's also more usable. The fact that you can check a motor, you know, and see how it pulls, you know, free running versus under load through the driveline of your truck. That's pretty neat. It can actually give you a visual representation of just how much driveline resistance you've got. Maybe you overgeared that transmission, not geared, maybe you overgreased that transmission. You know, you want to know how much grease is too much, how much grease is too little, how much grease affects the driveline drag. Well, you could actually find that out right here, technically. So, uh, now this thing is good for one to 50 amp, one to 50 volts. Man, I'm getting tongue tied here. But uh, one to 50 volts. So you could actually use this to break in your motors. Say you've got a brand new brush motor and you want to break it in. You can hook straight in, straight out to the motor and actually watch the amps and the watts, you know, kind of change. And I'm going to assume that you should be able to actually watch it, the amps drop, watts drop. And at that point you'll see the, uh, You'll know where the brushes are broken in into the commutator and all that, which I think that would be pretty neat. So also the brushless motors, being able to hook it up to this and test that, that really kind of makes me wonder how much does a brushless motor deteriorate over time? Do they really lose the magnetism in those neodymium rotors? Don't know. But uh, this may actually give me a tool to test that. Basically take a new motor, hook it up to this, and get a baseline. Write down all the information, the input voltage, uh, the motor, RP, not the RPM, I guess you could test that with an RPM meter, but the amps and the wattage, write all that down. Give that motor a few runs, you know, give it a few comps, you know, do whatever, a few races. Races would definitely make a difference there. And then go back and check that motor again using the same ESC. Now, 
ESCs may fade a little bit over time, so you may get a little bit of variance there. But overall, this is actually a really neat tool. Um, being able to see the driveline resistance in the TRX-4, you know, first gear and second gear, that was cool. If you take your truck in the mud, run this on it, take it in the mud. When you get back and after about three days when the rust has time to set in because not everybody opens up their vehicle to clean them out and that mud and water will get in there. No matter how waterproof they say it is, it will get in. Run it through this and see if you've got a increase in amps and wattage to make the, make the vehicle turn. You know, just uh, free spinning on a little test bench or in my case, some jack stands. But anyway, um, overall, it was way more usable than I thought it would be. I mean, really. You can update the firmware. I believe there's an update out, but I haven't done that yet. Now, I do have the servo tester. I'm gonna do a video on that. I've already done the uh, M8S charger. That little dude literally put 18 amps into a 4S. That was pretty darn awesome. Now, these were actually provided to me by Hobby Porter. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm impressed with them. And I'm not just saying that because they were sent to me either. They were, they're really interesting. So, I'm going to get into the servo tester, so stay looking for that. Guys, check that description where you can pick up one of these for yourself. Hopefully, I was able to show you some real-world car and truck footage versus, you know, planes and helicopters and stuff where most of the other videos are on these things. But anyway, guys, check out that description, and thank you all for watching.